After a somewhat miraculous journey of over 300 miles from the Pacific Ocean, these adult returning salmon and steelhead have one of three choices to make once they're in Lake Billy Chinook. They can either go up the Crooked River, the Metolius River, or the Deschutes River. The fish chose the Crooked River. Most of the biologists are kind of puzzled why. My theory is because of all the springs and of course the best tasting water in Oregon. We believe the Crooked River's habitat is producing higher numbers of healthier juvenile fish, which in return leads to more adults returning to the Crooked River. The two key species for our Crooked River would be the Chinook salmon and the Mid-Columbia steelhead. So we know that if we can get these two fish reestablished in sustainable runs year after year, that the rest of the system will be healthy as well. That'll be an indicator of system health. I don't think there has been any other species that is as central to the Northwest human experience as salmon. They are a critical food source for humans and animals alike. They support a thriving commercial and recreational fishing industry. It's been a surprise that the fish are choosing the Crooked River over the other two choices. However, it's also been a huge problem for the fish because they can't get past the Opal Springs Dam to move up river on the Crooked. The fish chose the Crooked River. They chose to come here in their search for suitable habitat. They are here and we need to help them access it as best we can. Lake Billy Chinook, which is the most popular reservoir in the county, had salmon and steelhead reintroduced into it when their dam had to be relicensed. So that put more recent impetus on us to try to figure out how to accommodate salmon and steelhead that were starting to go up the Crooked River. We can provide fish passage over our dam. It opens up over 100 river miles of habitat for salmon and steelhead. The Opal Springs Fish Passage Project is a win-win because it eliminates a barrier to fish migration moving up the Crooked River, and it also maintains a renewable hydropower source for the community. It is the number two priority fish passage project in the whole state, according to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Our board started having meetings about fish passage, salmon, steelhead, bull trout, native rainbows, all those. We needed to figure out a fish passage project that would work for all of them. Today, they're trapping and hauling adult fish around that project. It's not volitional passage right now, which would of course mean the fish are moving on their own. In a fish ladder, it's closer to a natural option, such that it provides safe, effective, timely passage of migrating fish. Before we could get started, we were faced with two main challenges. The first really was the engineering designs that would fit both the canyon and meet all the project objectives. The second one was securing the funding. The project is going to cost about $12 million, and I believe the funders is close to around $8 million of that, and our district will be paying about $4 million. What the Chutes Valley Water District could have done is waited until their current license term expired in 2032, but they decided instead to proactively engage with us, and I think we all ended up the better for it. There's two reasons for doing this fish passage. One is the right thing to do, and two, you can actually get better hydro revenue if you have fish-friendly hydroelectric power. We can get classified as renewable and make more hydroelectric dollars in our future. We hope that this project contributes to achieving healthy, sustainable, and harvestable populations of fish throughout the Crooked River and the Deschutes watershed. And that'll be good for the environment, the fish, and our customers because our customers will have a viable hydroelectric plant for the future. I really do think this project will be a win-win for the fish and our community.